this is basically a rubber stamp parliament, right? So if we do see this actually passed, does that mean that the U.S. will be forced to withdraw Hong Kong's special trading status? And what would be the implications of that? Well, it's going to put the U.S. in quite a bind because in effect, this will be the end of one country, two systems. This will be China breaking its pledge to keep Hong Kong, uh, to, to allow Hong Kong to keep its freedom through through at least 2047. So the gut reaction would be, well, the U.S. has to rip the special trading status away, but that's also going to hurt the protesters. It's also going to hurt their supporters in Hong Kong. So what I suspect is this is going to be more of a long, drawn-out process where you're going to see a, a tougher stance the, on the U.S. side. Uh, you could see sanctions on certain individuals. You could see certain sectors being uh, you know, be, being attacked rather than just a wholesale pulling back of the special relationship. This is just a really tough situation uh, for the U.S. government to be in right now. And obviously, Leland, there will be those on the pro-democracy side for whom this is a devastating blow. Uh, but to your point, this was coming. It may be accelerated. In terms of what needs to happen in response to it, if China accelerates the move away from, uh, you know, the, the two systems, what, ha what do people practically have to do, if anything? Or has it all been done in preparation for what was coming? Well, look, I don't think anything's been done, but I think that we know where this is going, because when it comes to Hong Kong, and once Beijing throws the hammer down and says, we are moving forward, we are going to, uh, article, we'll have the Article 23 uh, sedition laws put into place, uh, they can't walk back from that. They will not walk back from that. So the U.S. response will be very tricky, because increasing the leverage won't get them a better outcome. So you, there's some maneuvering, but I think a lot of this will, will fit into the overall toxic U.S.-China relations right now. How much do we push uh, on the Hong Kong issue? Do we give up the, you know, and, and how does that affect the trade deal? And how does that affect how we treat Huawei? Uh, the problem is, is that I don't think the U.S. government and, and the Trump administration has completely figured this out quite yet. At least in Congress, we seem to be looking at really rising bipartisan pushback against Beijing. So now Speaker Nancy Pelosi is saying that actually the House is looking at delisting this Chinese company, something that the Senate already passed in a bill. What are you expecting on this front and what would this do to the broader U.S.-China relationship? I don't suspect it's going to do much at all because, look, delisting Chinese companies is, is what this thing is called. It's not really delisting Chinese companies. It's, all, it's, it's setting a standard whereby every company, no matter what your nationality, including U.S. companies, have to adhere to certain regulations and they have to uh, adhere to certain audit, uh, audit uh, requirements. Uh, Chinese companies don't do that right now. So all this would do is level the playing field that is currently advantaging Chinese companies. It's quite a no-brainer, but it's also not something that's going to hit right away. So I think you, you have to have three straight years of non-compliance, and then you get your company kicked mm -hmm. out. So this is not a short-term thing. It's, it's a no-brainer, but it's not something that's going to affect the relationship that much in, in the coming months or, or even years. Give us your read of the current state of the, the Chinese economy, Leland, because you've got the, uh, the granularity that very few people have on what's happening there. Yeah, well, the, the interesting dynamic for us is that we're not focused on, on, on seeing a recovery or not seeing a recovery. We're just reading the data. And, and this is very different from Beijing's take. They've said the party has is, is, is vanquished the virus. They've said there's going to be a recovery, so they will announce a recovery. And the way you do that is by focusing on your bigger SOEs, your, your large firms, your firms in the major cities. And, and, and you have numbers that reflect that there's at least a gradual recovery going on. Uh, what we've been seeing, because we focus on not just those firms, but also the, the bulk of the economy, which is the private sector, which are small, medium-sized firms, they have had much more challenging conditions, and they are not recovering the way Beijing is claiming. They're still in contraction territory. So I think going forward right now, there's a very different story between what's happening in the big privileged firms versus the vast uh, bulk of the economy, and, and we're trying to tell the latter story, and Beijing wants to, wants to talk about the former.